Welcome back to the Kung Fu Theater. Today, our special guest is Sifu Am Su from San Francisco. He's a famous, very well-known uh, teacher from the Baji style. Welcome, Sifu Am Su. It's my pleasure. Thank you for coming to the Kung Fu Theater. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask you, uh, how did you start your martial arts training? Oh, no, that was back to uh, when I was first year in high school. <laughs> 30 years ago. Okay, so the Baji style, um, the, the name so similar to Tai Chi style. Mm -hmm. Is there any relationship between Baji and Tai Chi? Actually, no. And uh, you know what, Todd, you're not the first person to ask me this question, mm -hmm. okay? I guess the reason why, because Tai Chi is such a famous style, uh, maybe the number one uh, famous in the uh, among the Kung Fu styles and all over the world. Uh -huh. So people are really familiar with the Tai Chi and they hear about that and many of them they are doing Tai Chi. So when they hear about Baji, they are going to ask me, say, excuse me, and you know, they, they are here, right? Baji or Tai Chi? In fact, uh, Baji and Tai Chi are totally two different styles. Mm -hmm. uh, tai Chi, as everybody knows it, is originated from Henan province in the Chen village. And Baji is from Chang County in Hebei province. So, um, I know the Tai Chi style consider an internal style. Yes. What about Baji mm. style? Is it internal or external? Well, uh, I think uh, to divide an internal and external this way is a very common uh, misconception. To my opinion, internal and external is not a different style, but different level. Everybody has to start from an external. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, uh, let's be realistic. Uh, and then when you improve your technique at the higher level, so we call it internal, mm -hmm. okay? No matter Baji or Tai Chi, actually. But they all start from the uh, basic training and right. then get to the high level techniques. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so Baji style is, uh, I heard, is a lot of practical techniques. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, Baji is famous for its, uh, uh, its very, uh, the movement is simple. Okay, no, uh, do lots of uh, beautiful movements, beautiful postures. No, we do very simple, very straightforward techniques and emphasize the power issue. Because you know that in ancient times, uh, people used the uh, martial art to uh, defend their own country, their own city, village, uh, dead and self, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not like today's, uh, most of people do the Kung Fu for health, maintain uh -huh. health, for health exercise. So you have to be able to issue the power, and Baji is pretty famous for the uh, power issuing training. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since Baji style is uh, considered practical style, yes. mm -hmm. um, who's famous in the Baji style from the past, or why now? Uh, Baji, I can say Grandmaster Li, L E Li, Li Su Wen is a very famous one uh, at the period of. Uh, the end of Qin Dynasty to the beginning of the Republic. Okay. Uh, and he have lots of uh, good students. Uh, among those, there's three I can introduce. Uh, one is He Dian Ge. Okay. He's the coach of the bodyguard of the last emperor, Henry Puyi. And my own teacher, uh, Liu, Liu Yinqiao, uh, he trained the bodyguard for President Chiang Kai-shek in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And he have a Kung Fu brother, their classmate, Mr. Li, also last name Li, Di Yu Hai. Uh, Yu Hai actually his uh, nickname. Uh, his uh, name is uh, Li Jian Wu. Mm -hmm. He teach the bodyguard of Chairman Mao Zedong. I think this is a very interesting story, as everybody realized. Uh, Henry Puyi, Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong, they are so-called uh, mortal enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but their body guys all study the same style martial art, body chuan, mm -hmm. and from the same uh, teacher. Not the same teacher, but the three teachers, they came from the same school. Right. <laughs> so now, it's, uh, even in the United States, a lot of people practice body style. So you teach in the United States right now in San Francisco? Yes, uh, I've been teach here for 10 years. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, I have a class here in San Francisco in the city and also in South Bay, uh -huh. San Jose area too. All right, so you're teaching a lot of students right now? Yeah, but 
uh, I try to introduce body strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully someday we'll be as popular as Tai Chi strength. In your school, beside the Bachi style, do you teach uh, other style or how oh, yes, do you uh -huh. teach the students? Yeah, I do. Uh, besides the Bachi, we also teach the Chen style Tai Chi Chen mm -hmm. and Ba Gua Zhang. Yeah, the Ba Gua Palm mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. some weapons. Okay, and also Sibu Su, I heard about uh, you used to um, choreography uh, some fight scene in the Kung Fu movie. Um, oh, yeah. Are you still doing yeah. right now? Uh, no, not really. Uh, even recently, I just got hired to do a stage uh, drama. Okay, based on the background is uh, Badu. Badu is the grandson of uh, Chinggis Khan. Mm -hmm. Okay, based on his story when his troop uh, invented uh, Kiev in in Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay, which we're going to start the uh, rehearsal right away. Uh, hopefully, it will be on stage on the end of uh, October. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, not too much movie. Uh, the reason why is uh, when I was in Taiwan, uh, you asked me about my experience about the, uh, the choreography, the fighting scenes in the movie. Uh, when I was in Taiwan, I worked with some of the movie company and some Hong Kong company. Uh, my idea was try to put the real Kung Fu usage uh, into the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, try to use as a vehicle to promote the Kung Fu. I found it's, it's somehow difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you know that not every movie star is real martial artist. Right. And the movie is kind of a, a entertainment kind of a purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes the real usage in Kung Fu may be very effective, a very good technique. But when you, uh, that's my own experience when I uh, see it, after we, we took the, the, the fight, I watch myself, I don't feel really uh, like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had to uh, change a little bit, sometimes yeah. quite a bit. Well, it's quite a tough job uh, <laughs> to choreograph yeah. the fight scene in the yeah, movie. Right. And later on, uh, you show, you were showing us about uh, some fight scenes and between the real Kung Fu and how do you adjust in the, uh, for the Kung Fu movie. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> okay, to show a couple of sequences mm -hmm. and to uh, to see the difference. All right, okay, so let's check it out. Okay. And now I'm going to show you some of the fighting techniques uh, from the Kung Fu movie. And later on, I will do some comparison to show you what's the difference between the Kung Fu technique and the movie choreography. Uh, first of all, let me bring in my assistant tonight, Mr. Glenn Hewitt. Uh, Glenn Evans also is the assistant instructor in Adam Su Kung Fu School and he's going to help me to show the usage of the movie first. Okay, show start. Well, I'm not a movie star. <laughs> uh, obviously, my acting uh, wasn't really that good. But let me show you the difference between the movie and Kung Fu. Right. First of all, give me a punch like this. In the movie, I just show it's like so to block. Okay, another punch, go hit. Directly hit. But in the real Kung Fu technique, one, like so, is a shaving movement. Okay, other one, see the shaving on his arm to redirect the direction and dissolve the power. Okay? So this is the difference. But in the movie, we need it to be powerful. Okay. So most of the time, I would do it this way. Go up, go up, big movement, powerful. And watch the next two elbow strike. One. I cannot even reach him. But in a Kung Fu movie, he will brought like this. And then, through. see that? Those two, really, I'm doing the elbow movement in front of him, okay? Not hitting any target at all. Watch the very last moment. After this elbow strike, then I shift the way backwards, see that? That's really not my business. But you see this, the blocking, 
Like so. In a movie. And maybe... Like so. Okay, that's the difference. Okay. Uh, should we do another one? Uh, okay. Uh, this time, let's say Mr. Evans is going to give me a punch. Okay? See how I'm going to respond. Go! In a real Kung Fu usage, it's impossible. Why? Uh, do the slow motion. <laughs> okay? See? If I grab his wrist, fist, and try to deliver this punch, he's going to use the elbow to get me first. Elbow. Okay? So the real usage, we have to always be careful the second attack. So I will try to take care of his elbow like so. This hand. So I'm safe. But he's going to deliver another attack there. To worry me. So I brought like this. And then it. And obviously this is going to move it. <laughs> What's wrong? What's the difference? That's it. Analyze the movement again. Attack. Why don't I go in like this? And then... Uh, maybe not too clear, let me show you again. Do the solo. I brought in the movement like this. Using my elbow, attack his heart, chest area. But the problem is, this way, my, not me, the movie star, going to use the elbow to cover his or her own face. You're not going to like it. The audience is not going to like it. So, I had to change the technique like this. Instead of, instead of direct approach, I make a big U-turn like so. Why open? Clearly you can see an attack. Okay. Well, <laughs> hopefully, give you some idea to distinguish the real Kung Fu usage and the movie technique. Okay? Thanks for your help. <laughs> All right, now see you I know what to look for when I uh, watch the movie. <laughs> thank you again for coming to the Kung Fu Theater. Oh, that's my pleasure. Okay, thank you. Now back to the movie, Amsterdam Connection. <laughs> 